I'm here in Braunston on the Grand Union Canal and some of the roving traders are braving this British summertime weather. Uh, one of whom trades from a boat called P. Green. Uh, she's called Kay. She produces Canalia or Canal Folk Art as it's known. So let's go and have a chat with her. This is Kay, who trades from a lovely Barney boat, um, and we're in Braunston at the moment, uh, which I believe is where Barney boats were made. Oh yes, they were. They were built at the bottom lock, just behind us right. over here. Right. So, okay. yes. so how long have you been trading on uh, on P Green? Uh, it's. I think this is about my fourth year. Do you have a particular area that you uh, work from? Um, well, my mooring is my home mooring is at Welford upon the Leicester line, and. Uh, from there, I sort of go out for five months-ish and just depends on which way I head. Last year, I went up to Stoke-on-Trent. Previous year, I went down to Oxford and prior to that, I went um, along the Ashby Canal. This year, I'm heading north again, <laughs> up to Stoke, and then I'll see how far I get. Can you tell us what the significance of the roses and castles is? Uh, what's, what's the history of canal folk art? That's a very good question and to be honest I don't think anybody really knows what the answer to it is. Um, there's lots of hearsay and gossip that is not based in historical fact <laughs> around it. Right. Potentially it may have been linked with some of the work that was coming out of the potteries in the mid-19th century. Um, if you think of the style of flowers that are painted in canal folk art, it's very similar to some of the ceramic work that you see. may have been that. Um, may have just been that it was an easy thing to sort of daub onto the side of a boat or onto decorative pieces. Um, but nobody is really sure, and because it's a folk art, it, it very much lacks any kind of historical provenance and sourcing. Right. So yeah. the, the earliest um, written about piece where they talk about uh, a painted water can, a Buckby style can, was written in 1858. And in there they describe it as being decorated with flowers. Uh, which suggests that it was kind of the Roses and Castles style. Right, so, right. And that, right. you know, as I say, yeah. it was a 1858 publication. Um, and, and a Buckby can is, um, is a can that the, the boat has used for their, for their drinking yes, water. Yes, for the drinking water, yeah, absolutely. And called Buckby cans because they were painted at the wharf at Long Buckby. Right. Um, still, people refer to them as Buckby cans, but they're not really anymore because they're not painted there. So, right. so some people get a little bit sniffy about them being called Buckby cans because they're not. So. Yeah. Is there any particular significance to, to the castle? Again, nobody is really sure about it, but if you sort of look at the ceramics that were coming out in the mid-19th century again, you see these kind of ruined landscapes based in Italy and Greece and that type of thing. Perhaps that, that was where they, it sprung from, but right. again, nobody's sure. I mean, there's all these sort of legendary tales of it's where the boatman was dreaming that he was going to live, which I think is probably rubbish. <laughs> um, so, uh, but the thing I would say about them is that the different boatyards had different styles of castles. Right. So okay. depending on where things were being painted, you could very much see the style of castle that was coming out from a certain place. So here at Braunston, the nurses who were painting castles had a particular style, whereas at Polesworth, not far down the canal, um, very different. Right, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was, I was going to bring that up actually, because yeah. I wondered if there was any, <laughs> any way of identifying yeah. um, you know, where something was yes. painted, whether it was painted in Birmingham or London. Yeah. Or, there yeah. is, I mean, it, <laughs> the way it seems to have operated was that apprentices would join a boatyard and would be painting in the boatyard learning from the master and so they they would learn that exact same style right so at polesworth the family that ran the boatyard there um atkins the father henry taught his sons to paint and it's actually very hard to distinguish who did 
which painting they look pretty much identical even though it's you know two generations and it's three different men who actually did the painting yeah yeah, um, yeah. but there's definitely styles that that come out of the different boatyards um, so my roses are loosely based on a Braunston style of, of rose but I do my yellow flowers with a bit of a nod to Tooley's boatyard in Banbury and they the, the petals on them look a little bit more chrysanthemum like right um, uh -huh. Yeah. And is there a particular palette that, that uh, certain colours that certain painters would use that you might be able to recognise? I mean, generally, when you look at the canal art that was coming out sort of early 20th century, late 19th century, the colours are, are very similar. So it's white, white roses, red, yellow, occasionally pink ones as well, um, usually on a dark background. Um, and with the working boats, the the flower paintings were found in very specific places and on very specific items. Right. So they would be on the book cans, they would be on the dippers, um, you might see them on the side of, of the boat and on the fold down table inside the back cabin. And so I've sort of taken it and, and now paint on modern day items, not to, to knock the past, but to actually continue painting on usable pieces. Yeah. Course, so the yeah. you know the historic working boats as we see them today, all of the items that were painted were things that were being used on a daily basis. Yeah. And pieces I, of furniture. Yes. Yeah. Sort of thing, and yeah. so I kind of like to keep that in mind and actually have usable things for people because otherwise it seems like a, a pointless venture. Yeah. Sure. Um, and although the water cans, boaters do like them. For a lot of people, they're not going to buy a one, two, three gallon water can because it's just a decorative ob object nowadays. So sure. it's, it, yeah, yeah. you know, it's kind of swung the other way, really. Yeah, yeah. Is it a particular type of paint that you use? Um, it's a uh, sign writing enamel. Historically, what sort of paints did they used to? I think use? whatever they could put their hands on. <laughs> I think very fancy, I would think, which makes it all the more amazing that they actually got quite high pigment concentration in the paint that they did use. So how long have you been uh, been painting? About four years, so not very long really. Yes, and how did, how did you get into it? Oh, it's just one of those random twists of fate really. Had you any experience painting before? Um, only emulsion on walls. Oh right, <laughs> not quite the same then. No. Yeah, yeah. So did you get some training somewhere? Or? Um, I taught myself to begin with and then I spent a day with Julie Tonkin, who's right. quite well known. She sort of helped me see where I was going wrong with things. And then since then it's just been looking at other older dead painter's work and uh, taking it from there really. Yeah, we've got quite a huge variety of <laughs> stock on the boat, yeah. um, which presumably you all keep on the boat. So, yeah. um, where do you get your items from generally? So my stock is a bit of a combination of brand new things and second hand pieces that I find, uh, charity shops, that, that type of place. Um, my mum also looks out for things for me. Uh, so it, it gives her the right to go into a charity shop and spend money and then, <laughs> <laughs> then, then put in the receipts to claim oh, it back yeah, from I, me. I, I can, I can sympathise there, <laughs> I like a good charity yeah, shop. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, I'm quite particular about the type of things that I like to paint on. Um, so I do like unusual shaped items, I like sort of older pieces as well, but um, I don't tend to go for very modern shapes on, on some of the stuff that, that I buy. Um, so yeah, I'm always, I've got an eye out for different things as to, to what might sell yeah. really. Yeah. And I believe you also take commissions and can send your work out to various yes. places? Yes, yes. So. Um, I do take commissions. So I've recently had a man drive from Cornwall to Northamptonshire with a milk churn that I painted for him. Um, yes, I do, on my website there's a page which is Bring Me Your Stuff. And I say to people, just you know, as long as it's clean, that's my. I don't want to have to spend a lot of time scrubbing things and cleaning them up. Right, yeah, but if it's yeah. a clean item, I will definitely paint it. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. And I'm happy for people to just sort of email a picture of whatever it is they're in, interested in having painting, and I can give a, a rough idea of price. Yeah, yeah. So. And some of the items that you sell on a boat, I mean, uh, are you prepared to kind of send them overseas? Oh yes, for, yes. Yeah, I yeah. post uh, post a lot of my stuff that I sell, and it does go all over the world. Uh, I recently sent to water count to Australia so Brilliant. yeah okay yeah. and what about larger items like uh, you know sort of boat doors or yeah. touch 
uh, so, cratch yeah, boards or something? Cratch boards, again, I prefer to do cratch boards. I've just redone my cratch board. Um, cratch boards and door panels. I prefer to do them over the winter because I have more space to paint them. I have a house as well, um, so I have more space to be able to do them in the house. Um, whereas small items, I don't mind painting them on the boat. Um, but again, you know, it's sort of just a matter of sending me an email and booking it in, right. and yeah. then getting it to me. Where can we find you trading, Kate? So I tend to be do mostly pop-up trading, and each week I put it on Instagram, Facebook, where I'm going to be at the weekend. And if it's nice weather in the week and I'm somewhere busy, I might trade midweek as well. But I do um, post a new picture on Instagram every day, which feeds into my website of something new that I've painted. And you, I, you can have items posted to you, basically, as well. Right. So yeah. Yeah. Um, I tend not to do markets. I've done one or two, but I'm not a huge fan, personally, of, of doing the markets. Um, I prefer just to pop up wherever. <laughs> Okay, great. And I'll put um, links to your website and your you. Facebook page and Instagram in the description box below. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah. And what's your, your best-selling item, would you say? My best-selling item are these, the most marvellous hanging planters. Right. Currently £5.50 each, postage £3.50. Great, okay, but good. hanging planters are the big seller. Excellent. Everyone loves them. <laughs> <laughs> Right. Well, thank you very much, Kate. No, that's for, right. uh, thank you. For, um, you're very welcome. Kay Andrews on board P Green Mare. Also, do check out Kay's boating blog on her website. Well written and genuinely funny. Why don't you join me next time for a cruise down the Oxford Canal? As usual, thanks so much for watching. Uh, don't forget to uh, hit the like button, that would really help my channel. And if you haven't already, please subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you see when I upload new videos. Please share on your social media, uh, that will help my channel an awful lot too. Okay, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.